Welcome back to Cultivated Live from Planet 13 in Las Vegas. Lulu, nice Hello. to see you. Nice to see you. We're going to talk, I want to talk about a couple different things if okay. that's okay. Yes, of course. But let's talk about the Cannabis Media Council first. Okay. And tell us what that is, what you do. So the Cannabis Media Council, um, I'm one of the co-founders. It is a trade association um, that was created to help push um, for normalization and destigmatization into mainstream media. So, you know, we in the cannabis space for 20 years, we've been in our cannabis church singing the praises. <laughs> um, and there hasn't really been a lot of movement in terms of expanding into mainstream media. So um, we've been uh, pushing forward with different relationships across different media platforms, um, major media platforms like Hearst. Uh, that's what we launched with last year. Um, we're working with Condé Nast. Um, we had the first PSA placed in Vanity Fair this year. Um, and then a more controversial thing we did this this month, um, we did a takeover of Pornhub. Yeah. So no matter, <laughs> a full day, 24-hour takeover of Pornhub, yeah. that's 1.8 billion views per day. Describe what porn... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like we're having a foursome here right now. <laughs> so, first thing in Vegas. Um, so, you know, no matter how you feel about porn, um, the fact is we're sticking to our mission, which is we're trying to get eyes outside of just our you know, cannabis industry into mainstream media, because that's the only way we're going to move things forward to expand um, the, uh, just the awareness and the collective um, outreach so people can actually start having conversations about it. And yeah. we push forward with that with our I'm High Right Now campaign. Um, which I think is pretty clever. We won six Cleos for that. Um, we're up at the MJ's this year for Trade Association. So that's what the cannabis... Tell us about the campaign. So um, I'm high right now. Um, that's kind of our little slogan. Um, and we created four personas specifically targeting um, the elders. So, I mean, that is one untapped uh, demographic that no one really, um, you know, caters to. And if we look at the statistics, they're like the number one growing... Um, demographic for for cannabis use and if you look in there like you know in the in the cabinets they have all these medications so for you know I remember back in the day I remember it was like we have to hit the the Chardonnay mom or the Whole Foods mom that is not the person that is buying cannabis or consuming every day normally but if you look at the elderly population um, from topicals to sleep tinctures to all of the above I mean that is a great market that no one has really focused on. So the use case is appropriate. Yeah, um, the average customer usually purchases from three locations, hmm. but somebody who hmm. falls into more of a senior category yeah. actually doesn't transact at three locations. They're closer to only one. Um, so they show up from a really loyal perspective. Exactly. And, you know, we worked with Sister Mercy, who's an amazing agency and because everyone has had deep experience in cannabis we also picked the elderly market because um, you know with the advertising restrictions you know you can't you have to make sure that no one looks under 21 so like okay we're, we're doing it so. <laughs> everybody looks old in the <laughs> it is interesting uh, because there were even before like we well, that's true, three of us are Canadian. Um, I'm American, but I live in Canada. Anyway, that, that has nothing to do with it. But pre-legalization, yeah. but pre-legalization, there was like the seniors are going to be this massive market. We're going to cater to it, and it's going to be amazing. And then recreation, ha you know, adult use happened, yeah. and then like that sort of went away. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, five years in, now it's like companies and brands are like, well, how do we differentiate? Because this market is loyal. Mm -hmm. They have disposable income. They, and now the normalization has happened to a place, certainly in Canada, like there are dispensaries everywhere. Yeah. So there's like ones that everybody feels comfortable going into mm -hmm. and some that I wouldn't go into. Like there's there's everything in between. And so like it is this evolution of what you're talking about. Yeah. I think Canada is actually quite ahead of a lot of places in the States. Um, but it is interesting that someone like you is focused on how do we get there? How do we get there faster? And how do we actually do it in interesting ways that resonate? I mean, it's also the, you know, with the, the elders, it's... Um, changing their their mindset because i mean that was the demographic that was first like all the you know just say no and the propaganda hit mm -hmm. them so i think just with education and conversations like like you would with your you know with your elders um i think that's what's key is is you know having like the i'm high right now campaign it's very cheeky it's a little bit provocative for some people but like everyone who says like i sent this to my mom or my dad or my aunt they're like oh my god they just 
had a blast. So we're trying to just focus on lighthearted, um, more fun conversations because everything has been very heavy and medical and X, Y, and Z, which is very much needed, like social equity, social justice, all of that is needed. But, you know, we have to also honor that cannabis can be fun and lighthearted and social. And that's what we're trying to do is, and also like our world is so heavy with like cancel culture, censorship right now. So we just want to make fun campaigns that people can like resonate with, maybe bring a smile to their face. And that's, that's our objective. What's interesting specifically with that is like, if you are targeting more of a senior population the assumption then is always that the product goes medical in some format mm, right. or or likability if we're talking about like capsules we're talking about cbd products but we are ignoring that this group of people has an entire life of recreation yes yes um, like golf courses are real yes <laughs> and right. and identifying <laughs> yes. and like picking out influencers within those communities is so helpful in helping with adoption when you have somebody go and talk about their own experience. Agreed, 100%. That's why we, we have four personas. Mm-hmm. One is the lovers, because, you know, like, I didn't know, like, a very high percentage of, you know, da 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 is, yeah senior, <laughs> yeah, senior joy and relationship is a real thing. I'm trying not to be crass about something. I won't say it. Um, and we have the golfer as one of our personas. We have the gardener. And then we have the walker. I mean, those are main activities that, you know, as you get older, like, those are the mm-hmm. things that you do. So we stuck to that. And another interesting thing that we really thought about was, like, you know, if we're going to be doing normalization, usually if within a family structure if grandpa and grandma are cool with it it kind of trickles down to the rest of the generations within the family and then once the family is into it then that permeates into the community and i really much believe in that because my parents and i came to the u.s um, from china and we ended up in eugene oregon of all places and if no one if you've been there but it's like this hippie utopia that has not changed since probably the 70s and my parents are very strict and if you talk to most Asian families um, cannabis drugs anything is like very looked down upon if like our friends who are Asian in the cannabis space they probably haven't spoke to their parents about what they do honestly (laughs) but when my parents came they knew nothing about US culture it just turned out that the people that took care of us like taught my parents English babysat me they're all cannabis growers consumers so the fact that my parents are from China extremely strict and they're totally cool with cannabis just kind of gives you know insight that if you can embrace it within a community like that's how normalization happens so can we shift to new york for a sec yes because you spend in addition to all the stuff you just talked about about like you spend a lot of time thinking about new york yes and what's happening there and it's been a big week it's been yeah so it's been a bit of a shit show um <laughs> like i think you're giving it a lot of credit <laughs> it's been a mess um you know there was a lot of hope so i've been in new york since 2006 and started a uh education platform called on the revel in, in 2016 and we've just been you know creating events um it's turned into um more of a conference also we had a trade show this year we do festivals because in new york you can't really have industry of cannabis without giving homage to culture because it's always been in New York you know a lot of West Coast people say well we create a cannabis culture and I'm like that is true but New York uses cannabis to create global culture so um, we had a lot of hopes I mean it's the only state that has you know had legislation with um, social equity built in from the beginning the um, execution of that has been Rough. A rough, <laughs> rough. Yeah. Yeah, I was rough waiting going. for the word. Yeah, yeah it's been it's been adjective. rough. Um, you know, it's I think it's more amplified because you know New York is on the international stage. It's also like you know in the U.S. a very prominent city. So mm-hmm. you know New York's extra, but with all the things that happen, it's magnified and it's extra extra. So um, there has been a settlement agreed upon by the, um, Fiore case with the OCM. I don't know if I should say my feelings about that, but, um, it'd be fun if you did. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. Yes. I'm please? like, I'm like white bros. Can you please stop throwing your legal temper tantrums to like take down? It's like, it's so lame. It's just like, 
I can't have it so no one else can. And I'm like, all you guys had to do was wait another three to four months. That's all you had to do because applications are open. You could do that. But anyways, I could say more, but maybe that should go off the record. <laughs> I like what you said. It's good. Just I mean, say it. Yeah, I mean, just it's just, it yeah. Then you just back it up and be like, I'm high right now. I'm, I'm high right now. High. Exactly, exactly. You know, I just think, you know, like, give people a chance, right? Like, if you... Uh, We'll talk more often. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. I do want to thank you for coming in because you were, I think, our third guest today, and it's early. Uh, it's early, although we're on East Coast time. It's like I know it was hard. It yeah. was it was hard. I didn't go out too late though. I got home at one. So one one a.m. I had been sleep. I was already up at one. Having slept like you five haven't hours. slept yet. <laughs> you still been up since last night. I know I have. I went to bed so early. I'm old and I like to go to bed early. Um, <laughs> Especially in Vegas, actually. I find it's like after it's hours. It's very early at bedtime. So it is. Yeah, it's yeah. like, I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> it's fun to just slink away. Um, but I do want to thank you for being here. I, I want to thank you for the innovative campaigns that, that you guys are putting on. And, um, and the groundbreaking, frankly, Pornhub takeover that I didn't notice in real time. I but think I we're did. doing another one within. So it was an all-state campaign. Right. I think we're doing Michigan and Minnesota. Or Missouri, huge porn cities. All the M's. Porn states. Yeah. We, yeah. What, what is the, the audience M's. you're trying to reach on, like, Pornhub? <laughs> I think. Like, I mean, Pornhub is just massive. big in general. I think. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's just yeah. a big audience. Okay. Like we, I mean, that's what our mission is. Like, we want to hit mainstream, and we don't mind being provocative, right? Like, that's how conversations start. But the funny thing is, like, we got trolled by. I call them the brides of Jesus. Um, for ants for sex trafficking or anti-porn and I'm the, like sorry, the brides of I call them the brides of Jesus because like I like, look at their Instagram and they're like all in their bikinis sucking on straws licking popsicles and I'm like you're really going to be giving a shit well you know like be provocative I'm all about you doing whatever be you love your body do your thing but don't be a well, hypocrite it actually has a <laughs> cannabis tie-in uh, uh, well, well Pornhub's Canadian. That's one thing. But was recently bought within the past two or three years by someone who... It is. It's yeah. based in Montreal. And they uh, got bought by a, a Canadian financier whose first foray oh. was in Canopy. Oh, yes. One of the original Canopy co I mean, it kind of... You know, you can't have conversations about... You know, destigmatizing cannabis with also having conversation about like destigmatizing, you know, sexuality yeah. and sex work. Like, yeah. sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I mean, they... They kind of go yeah. together. It's like the whole so. trinity. But people like flipped out. Like you put two sins together. That's not, po you know, oh that's God. bad. I'm like, all right. Only one at a time. Have you been to Vegas? <laughs> Only one at a time. <laughs> Only one the at a time. The whole city is, is <laughs> premised on that. Lulu, thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, we look forward to connecting with you as, as things go on. And good luck uh, both with the uh, Cannabis Media Council.